In this video, I'm going to show you how I've built the speedo bracket for the Daytona Velona 2 that I'm going to run on the BMW R80. This project has taken way longer than I expected, but I've learned a valuable lesson. But first, let me get you up to speed. In the last episode, I've made several different prototypes, some for metal, some 3D printed, but none of them was a clear winner. I noticed that I started to procrastinate because I thought I have to build a version that finally works, better be done yesterday, and hopefully also looks good. And those types of perfectionist thoughts are never good because I was avoiding this project like a ball in a game of dodgeball. So I looked for ways to get out of this mental trap and reduce the pressure. And what worked for me was to decide that I wouldn't record the first steps and just tinker. And my plan was that if something good would come out of it, I would just go back, make a second better version. So I went back to the drawing board and did a few sketches and prototypes on the acrylic sheets that I like to use and came up with something that looked like this and I thought it was nice to incorporate all of the parts that are already on the bike, the top triple clamp and then the handlebar brackets that sit right here. So I've spent quite a while figuring out how to do this, cut this part out and this actually mounts to the bike like so. But the thing with this one is I, it's more like a chopper vibe, I think, with all of these horns and sharp pointy things and stuff like that. The speedo would have sat in this bracket and pff, I don't know. <laughs> Even though this could be seen as a massive waste of time, because please don't ask me how long it has taken me to shape all of these curves and fire these sharp pointy things. It was good that I've just built something because before I didn't give myself room to fail. And by that, I didn't give myself room to do anything, not even start. And in my experience, building a custom bike is a journey of failing until you get it right. And it took me a while to realize that again. Now I at least knew that I didn't want chopper vibe on the BMW and I needed something simpler. So I went back and tried to make a very simple bracket. I've seen those a ton, but there was still a problem with this because I never really wanted to build a bracket like this for the speedometer because I think most people build them like this, especially for coffee races. And they do look good for coffee races where it's just a plain plate and then a cutout for the speedometer to sit in. But I want to have something that is on the one hand, a little bit more challenging. And on the other hand, also, a little bit more unique. So the final prototype version that I actually like is a combination of the plate and the bucket that I had. So we're gonna build something that looks like this. Let me show you on the bike. This is the first part that I'm gonna build out of two millimeters steel. And that goes right here. I've adjusted one of the buckets that I've made a little bit. So that will sit like so. The Speedo fits in like this. There are slots for the buttons and holes for the mounting screws. So now we just have to build it. Alright, the plate part of the bracket is done, so we can now move on to the bucket. And with the prototype bucket, I have actually drilled the holes after I've welded it onto the tube. And I noticed that I should probably do that before to get accurate measurements and the proper hole placement. So we're gonna do that first. As I've said in my last video, the bracket for this speedometer was my very first fabrication project that I've done like two years ago. And I struggled a lot with getting the correct measurements for the mounting points and stuff like that. So I quickly want to share with you how I'm doing 
doing it now. And this might be super basic for you if you've already fabricated a few things, but it would have helped me so much if I knew this two years ago. To make my life easier, I've started with a square piece of two millimeter steel and marked the center of that. That way I can use that to draw the circuit and I already have the two center lines, which is perfect. If you have something like this, you always want to look for center lines that you can then reference to. In this case, we're lucky because the two screw holes are perfectly in the center. So you just go ahead, take your digital caliper and measure from center to center so you know how far they're spaced out and then you transfer that onto one of the center lines. That's gonna be your horizontal reference line. From here, what you can do is take the ruler and then measure from the center of the hole up to the outer ring of the button basically. And then I've drawn a parallel line to the center line 11 millimeters up. So that means we already have the bottom part right here of the cutout, so we just need the top part. And you can get that by just measuring the size of the buttons. So you just add that to the line that you've already drawn and then you have the top part of the cutout. That's how you hopefully get the right measurements. we we'll see in a second if that worked, but this would have helped me so much. Fortunately, I've learned a thing or two, even though it's basic stuff like this. All right, all three parts are cut out and shaped into the form that we want them to be in. So now it's time to weld everything together. I've got all of the three pieces tagged together now. I was debating whether I should tag this top plate on there right now or later, but I decided to do it now because I hope that the more pieces I have connected, the less this is gonna distort. I've got everything welded up. The last adjustment that I want to do is to build up these two little corners right here. And they're probably a little thin to properly weld them. So I'm gonna use silicon bronze filler rod to build that up because I don't want to run the risk of burning a hole into the tube. This is what the piece looks like now that everything is welded up. So now it's time to make it look nice. The first step is to remove these weld marks and I start by taking off the top because there's less material and then I work my way around the side to get something like this which I can then refine with the files and sanding paper. I'm finally done. This was so much work, so much tedious work, getting all of the transitions right, filing everywhere and then giving it a nice surface finish just took forever. But this is what it looks like now. It's finally time to put it on the bike. Ah. I've basically waited for this moment for two years. Nice, 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 nice. Yes, it's straight. Even though version two was my slight favorite the last time, I actually agree to like this one a lot while building it. Not only because it was a nice fabrication project, but it has taught me a valuable lesson. And also it has a few advantages with the build. For one, it nicely fills in the gap between the handlebar and the headlight. And when it comes to that, Ronnie rightfully pointed out that small headlights are all the rave nowadays, but sometimes a slightly more old school looking headlight, a bigger one, might actually suit the line of the bike better, which I do agree. But that's probably the problem if you think you would build a custom bike in four months, and then it takes you three years. You've bought all this stuff at the beginning of the build because you want to be prepared, and now you're stuck with all of the parts that you bought then. Anyways, who knows? By the way, if you have the same speedometer and you want to have a similar bracket, I've actually improved the prototype for version one a little bit. I made it stronger, cleaned up some areas. Uh, so I'm gonna put the link down below where you can download it so you can print it yourself. Just keep in mind that I haven't tested this yet. So you definitely have to check for yourself if it's strong enough with your filament and your printer settings. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to follow the build, hit the subscribe button. Here's a video that you can watch next. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.